and Texas Congressman Al Green have filed articles of impeachment against the president. They claim he is, quote, in violation of his constitutional duty to take care that the laws be faithfully executed, has prevented, obstructed, and impeded the administration of justice during a federal investigation. Here is how White House Deputy Press Secretary Sarah Huckabee Sanders responded to those claims. I think that is utterly and completely ridiculous and a political game at its worst. And joining us now is one of the folks behind that move, California Democratic Congressman Brad Sherman. Uh, so, Congressman, the Russia investigation is far from over. Any good prosecutor will wait to build their case. They'll wait to have an ironclad case before they move forward with their, with their prosecution, before they move forward with trying the case. Why are you filing articles of impeachment now? Do you believe that you have an ironclad case? I do. Uh, I took an oath of, uh, of to the Constitution, and it calls for the impeachment of a president who has committed high crimes and misdemeanors. We've got clear and convincing proof, sworn testimony of obstruction of justice as defined by Section 1512b3 of the Criminal Code of the United States in two instances. First, in February, the president threatened James Comey in order to get him to drop an investigation or curtail it uh, regarding Mike Flynn. And then in May, the president fired James Comey and indicated that the reason he did it was to curtail an investigation into Russian collusion. Now, it's true we may find other high crimes and misdemeanors. And uh, when you say uh, go to court and prosecution, this is a long process. And uh, the next step is for the Judiciary Committee to hold hearings, and they're not going to hold them unless we have substantial national pressure on them how to do, do you, just that. How do you convince your GOP peers to get on board with this? None of them have said that they would do it. There was one maybe impeachment um, uh, uh, congressman who, who brought it up maybe at yeah. one point, but that is about as far as anybody's been willing to go on the GOP side. In fact, many of them just call this, this a, a big witch hunt. Well, it's hard to call it a witch hunt now that we see the emails of uh, Donald Trump Jr. Uh, but the immediate effect that I'm hoping for, but it's only a slight hope, is that people in the White House will finally sit down with the president and say for a number of reasons, including the fact that articles of impeachment have already been filed, you've got to radically change how you're governing the country. We've got to stop and control these impulses. We've got to make decisions in a careful manner. If they do that, then I may never get Republican support in any significant uh, number of uh, my Republican colleagues. But if this level of incompetence continues, if it's one thing after another that shows that we're not getting competent governance, then next year, uh, Republicans will not only be joining, but they'll be saying, we're glad that you got the ball rolling as early as you did. What about but, the critics uh, out there, Congressman? Mm -hmm. The critics who will say, you're just playing right into President Trump's hand. You're playing into the hand, which is that he came in to clean up Washington, and Washington is doing everything it can to stop him from doing that. That's an argument that a lot of Trump supporters made to me when I was on the campaign trail for why they voted for him. Well, uh, they didn't elect him to obstruct justice. They didn't elect him to fire James Comey in order to curtail an investigation under the federal criminal law. They didn't elect him uh, to uh, obstruct justice, and they didn't elect him for this impulse, uncontrolled impulses, disclosing classified information to the Russians. Uh, just on an impulse. That's not what they elected him to do. Also, I'm not trying to change national policy with this. I have no illusions. I served with Mike Pence here in the House for 12 years. I disagree with him on just about everything. And there are some in our party who have said, Sherman, Pence would provide competent constitutional advocacy for some of the most regressive policies you can imagine. And that is, in fact, the case. But the Constitution requires that we move forward when we have clear and convincing evidence of high crimes and misdemeanors, and the national interest requires that we have competent pre a competent president, uh, even if it's an advocate for the policies that uh, the Trump-Pence voters voted for. 
Congressman Brad Sherman, Democrat of California. Congressman, thank you very much. Thank you. Next up.